Hello. Uh, good afternoon. This is uh, Petter Tønnesen uh, speaking. Uh, thank you for attending on this uh, webinar. Uh, we're going to uh, run through a presentation of the tool, uh, both lifting an application from um, VB6 to .NET and also to HTML5. Uh, I'm going to show you the steps and do it uh, in a, a technical way. Uh, uh, just shortly, I see that there's uh, some of you which I know the name on and you know me partly, but I've been working with uh, um, Smobilize and the technology for some years now here in uh, Norway and uh, also been actively working with the Swedish market uh, and the Nordics in general uh, the last, uh, yeah, nearly last year. And we have performed some projects uh, with different setups in uh, in Norway and Sweden, uh, all from license-based project to to full uh, migrated uh, solutions uh, from to what, what is fifty thousand uh, code lines to one point seven million code lines. So uh, we have some local experience, and and Mobiles have the twenty years in the migration industry. So. We're going to go ahead and my colleague Mark Munro will take us through the techni technical part and please feel free to, to raise your hand or uh, uh, also uh, pop down questions on the way and we will uh, take those uh, around. Uh, again, thank you for participating and uh, I'll let Mark Munro take it from here and I'll be back in a for Okay, thanks Peter. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Mark Munro from Mobilize.net. So I'd like to introduce you to our latest technology that greatly accelerates the migration of VB6 and C Sharp applications to the web, mobile and cloud environments. So I'm going to start off looking at a VB6 application <clears throat> and from there I'm going to migrate that application through to C Sharp and the .NET platform and then move on to how we migrate that to the web. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take a quick look at our VB6 application. It's a very typical VB6 application, MDI application with pop-ups, grids and so forth. So if you look on the right hand side of my screen, okay. you can see yeah, a, a number of forms. Let's click on the customer form and we can see the customer form with buttons and so forth form here with grids etc. If I look at some of the code, it's very typical BB6 code, got comments, functions etc. So let's quickly run the application to give us a context for the rest of the presentation. So this is our application, we can manage our customers, we can create invoices, load up the grid etc. So like I said, very, very typical. Um, I'm not going to come back to this, but you'll see this application in its various flavors throughout the demonstration. So the first step of the process is I'm going to migrate this application from VB6 to C Sharp and the .NET platform. So I'm going to do that using a tool called the Visual Basic Upgrade Companion. The first step of the process is I'm going to create a new solution. I give the solution a name. I specify an input path. So the input path is the location of my VB projects. And I give it an output path. Okay. What the system does is it scans that directory for all of the VB projects that are in that directory tree. So as you can see here, we've only got one project, the SKS.vb. <clears throat> At the same time, it, scanning the application, it resolves all of the external references with inside the application, so it detects all of the OCX controls, DLLs, and type libraries, and you can see them listed here. Now on the left hand side you can see a series of green check marks. If for some reason it can't find the physical OCX or DLL, then this check mark won't, won't be there and we can manually add that DLL through that mechanism. But in this case, the application's 
the system has found everything. The next step of the process is to com configure our upgrade options. Okay. And these define how the Visual Basic Upgrade Companion is going to migrate our VB6 code to C Sharp or VB.net. So you can see here a list of all of the controls, the grids, Microsoft controls, other controls, third party controls, and code conventions. So all the options that we can configure. So if we go back up to the top here and just look at this top one. So the application uses ADODB to access the database. And if I select a drop list, you can see the various options I've got for how I want to migrate all my ADODB calls. So do I use ADO.net using System Data Common, or using SQL Client, or using from interop. If I want more details about how that migration will take place, I can click on this view button off to the right. And this will bring up a detailed description of how we're going to migrate this code. So on the right the left hand side you see a, a description. On the right hand side we've got some sample VB6 code and corresponding VB.net and C sharp code that would be generated if we use that option. If we select using SQL Client, then we can see a different description and some different examples. If we have a look at the code conversion section, for instance, and we look at error handling, on the right hand side here we can see we've got some Visual Basic 6 on error resume and how this will be migrated to C Sharp. Now you can see here that the VB.net is blank because we've selected the try catch for lambdas and this option is only available we migrate to C Sharp. If I click on convert to try catch, then you'll see the VB.net and the C Sharp options. Now, you'll go through, you know, you would go through this process a number of times potentially, changing these options and working out which is the option that's going to work best for you. Work with us um, to figure out how best to do the mapping. We're going to leave just the defaults here. So once we're happy with these options, we click the confirm options here and the next step of the process is to move on to the actual upgrade. Now before we do the upgrade, perform the upgrade, we've got a couple of things we've got to check. The first thing is our target language. What do we want to migrate our Visual Basic 6 code to? Do we want to migrate to C Sharp or Visual Basic .NET? In this case we're going to stick with C Sharp. <clears throat> the other option is which version of Visual Studio do we want to use? and the corresponding .NET framework version. So we're going to select Visual Studio 2013. The next step will be to actually perform the upgrade by clicking on the upgrade projects. Now this application has got about just over 8,000 lines of code. It takes about five minutes to run. So what I'm going to do is skip ahead and look at one I did earlier. So now we're going to move into Visual Studio and we're going to look at this Visual Basic 6 application that has now been migrated to C Sharp and the .NET framework. So here we can see our customer form. Once again, it looks very similar. Yeah, it doesn't look massively different from the VB6. We do our very best to preserve the look and feel. I look at this. At stock, once again, it looks very similar. We've got grids, buttons, etc. <clears throat> If I take a quick look at the code, for so the customer form, you can see whereas before it was functions, etc., now we have a class with methods and so forth. We also have all of your comments, so all the comments have also been preserved from your VB6 to your C sharp. We also add additional comments okay, here to give you a description of how we've performed the migration and they contain links back to our support cycle give you more details about that particular configuration option. And as you can see it's all standard C sharp code. If you also look the names of all the forms etc have all remained the same. So we haven't made any architectural changes we've just made a platform change. We've gone from VB6 to C sharp. Now, you may have noticed that there's these other pieces here 
the what these called are helper classes. So when the system migrates your code, it generates uh, some helper classes. Now it's very important to note here that we do not use any proprietary runtime systems. Okay, and that's a very important point for all of our customers. But we do generate these helper classes. Now these helper classes are generated in source code form. You can look at them, you can change them, they're yours. Okay. So once you've done the generation, you're not dependent on any components provided by us. Okay. So let's now run the application in Visual Studio. Okay, you can see here, once again, the application looks very similar. We manage customers. Create the invoice through the same process but as I said earlier we preserve the look and feel as much as possible between our VB6 and our C Sharp and .NET version of our application which is very important for you and your users because they don't have to relearn an application they don't you know, they'll sit down in front of this application and it will look and behave identically to the old Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to step back into the slides and have a quick look at what I've just done and then what am I going to do next. So what we've done is we've taken our VB6 application with the VB forms, the VB code sitting on top of the VB runtime system and we've migrated that 100% to C Sharp, WinForms and .NET. And as I said earlier, there are no proprietary runtime libraries. Once you've done the migration, all the code is completely yours and you're not dependent on anything that we provide. Now what we want to do is look at, well how do I now take that application and migrate it to a modern web-based application? Um, running in a web browser, running in a phone um, and potentially hosted on the cloud. Now to achieve that we're going to have to make some architectural changes. Okay, the first architectural change we're going to have to do is we're going to have to extract all of the UI code and convert that to HTML, JavaScript and CSS. We make use of the Kendo UI framework and jQuery on the client. The next step of the process is to externalize all of our database connections and other connections so that we're making the application cloud ready. We utilize a model view, view model architecture between the client and the server. So on the client, we generate a view model. On the server, we generate a corresponding view model. So on the client, it's in JavaScript. On the server, on the cloud, it's running in C Sharp. And we generate some code to synchronize the two view models. And that synchronization takes place over J, uh, using JSON over AJAX and HTTP. The final step of the process is to wrap the server code in ASP.NET so that we can run that locally in IIS or deploy it out onto the cloud. So let's look at how we do that. Now we're going to look at another tool called Mobilize.NET Studio. Okay, so this is a tool that we use for migrating our C-sharp code to the web. So the first step of the process is we're going to create a solution. Provide an input path. Now this time our input path is going to be our C-sharp code. And we provide an output path, so where are we going to generate this new version of the app? So the first thing we're going to do is configure how we want to perform this migration. And there are two options here. We can optimize for size or we can optimize for speed. If we optimize for size, we create a lightweight client and we keep all of the data validation code on the server. If we optimize for speed, then we create a fatter client and put all of the validation logic on the client. 
So with with a smaller client, there are more client-server interactions between the browser and the server. With the fast client configured for speed, it reduces the number of interactions between the browser and the client. We're going to just leave it at the small client for the minute and click the run button. Now, when we click the run button, this is going to start the migration process. This will take you know, 90 seconds or so. So what we're doing here is now re-architecting our application. We're generating the HTML, JavaScript, and CSS files for all of our forms. Um, we're reorganizing the back-end code and generating our model view, view model, JavaScript, and C-sharp components. I said this will take a few seconds to finish. Right, there we go, the code has now been generated. So on the top here we have this compare tab. So if I click on that, what this allows us to do is using this solution explorer and to look at the old and the new code. Now what I'm going to do is select on the bottom left hand corner this related files option. And if I select the old code okay, and I open up one of the forms, in this case it's the request approval designer.cs file, we can see here in the new code this has been converted to HTML, CSS and JavaScript. If we look in the old code, it's just standard C sharp. If we look on the right hand side to the new code, now we can see all the standard HTML code that's generated, standard CSS files, and our corresponding script that's going to execute on the client. If I select the logic behind the form, so the request approval.cs file, we can see this file has been broken up into a number of components. So we've we've got the request approval CS, we've got a controller, and we've got a view model. And once again, we can see the old and the new. Now I'm going to use another tip here with the highlight changes. And this allows me to see the difference between the two files. If I scroll down a second and look at this section here. So in this section here on the old code, you know, we're interacting directly with the form. If we look at the new code, the new code is running on the server. It can't interact with the form. It's interacting with the view model. Okay. So we can see in the tool how the system has been mapped. So what I'm going to do now is jump back into Visual Studio and take a look at this application. So here's the application in Visual Studio. We open up the SKS folder. We see all of our JavaScript, I'm sorry, C Sharp. We see all the HTML and CSS files, etc. You'll also notice that once again we generate helpers and we make use of helper classes. And once again, these are all provided for you. Okay, you get the source code, you can change them, modify them, and look at them. Okay. And you can see here we've generated the website. So let's run this application. So the first step of the process is to set this up the website as the startup project. And we're going to run the application now using Google Chrome. Now what this is going to do is deploy this application locally into IIS, and then once the deployment into IIS is complete, it will start the application running inside our browser. So here we go. We have our application now running inside our browser. It's a single page application, and we can see we've modeled and used, <coughs> and generated something that still has an MDI interface, 
but now running inside our web browser. Functionality is the same as before. We click on Manage Customer. I can see my customer form. I can tab through the data. <laughs> database to wake up. to the database. Let's try create invoice. And as you can see, the look and feel of the application is very similar to our C Sharp application. Okay. Slightly different because it's now um, running in a browser, but we have CSS files behind it that we can modify to you know, change the look and feel. Okay. But at the moment, the application is all running locally. So what I want to do is take this application and now run it in the cloud, in Azure. So to do that, what I'm going to do is publish the application. Okay, I have my profile already loaded up, so I'm just going to click the publish button. So this is now going to pu push this application out into Azure and when it's all finished, it'll launch Google again. Right. So as you can see now, we look at the top here, the URL. It's now a public URL out on the internet. Take a few seconds for it to all finish starting up. And here we go. Our application is now running in the cloud in exactly the same way as it was before. Okay. So, now we've got the application deployed out in the cloud, now I want to look, how does my application look and behave on a mobile phone? Now what we've done is previously we've already updated a few of the CSS files and what I'm going to do is use Google Chrome's development tools to simulate a mobile phone. I'll quickly refresh. We should see in a second a slightly different slightly different version of the application. Okay, so the CSS has moved things around, changed the size of things so that my application looks and fits into a mobile phone rather than into a full blown browser. So voila, we have now gone from a two tier client server C Sharp WinForms application to a three tier cloud enabled application with a browser or phone or tablet front end. So that's the end of the demonstration. Peter, do you want to yeah. take over? Uh, yep, super. And um, uh, <clears throat> Mobiles have been working in this field for, for years and have uh, a lot of uh, 
customers and partners around the world and a uh, long history of uh, fulfilling projects both on customers uh, sites uh, work with a lot of the huge uh, ISVs uh, around the, in, in this field and also uh, system integrators and uh, uh, there are uh, different uh, companies working in different countries and I will cover uh, the, uh, the needs uh, in that sense, um, if you move to the next slide, uh, Mark. Uh, Mobileyes have, uh, as I said, been doing this for years and, and is one of the absolute leaders in uh, this field modernization of, of uh, software. The um, HTML5 uh, option is rather new and has a, has a significant uh, traction in the market uh, since the launch uh, early in April this year and um, we see a huge potential for a lot of customers here because the move from ordinary desktop applications to, to the internet is going very fast and uh, with the tool set it's possible to take it all the way. Um, Mobiles is also tightly uh, working with Microsoft uh, both uh, to have the right knowledge to set up this uh, tools uh, in, in uh, the way it's done uh, and also distributed uh, as a part of the MSDN network. So a uh, lot of you around there uh, get to know the uh, tools that uh, way. Uh, I can, there is always, uh, there's a lot of histories from customers but I can just speak for the local projects uh, performed and, and uh, we have a high uh, satisfaction uh, rate on those projects uh, because it's it's on budget, it's on time, and it's at quality which is normally goes higher than the, the customer expects. And uh, this is uh, based on the huge uh, experience uh, Mobiles have built uh, throughout the, the years in this business. And uh, yeah, around. Uh, 200 uh, active uh, 200 persons in, in the company and, and a lot of uh, companies working around and developers working with this uh, all, of, all the time and as Mark stated there there is this is tools and it's not uh, what you call something you attach to for uh, the, the rest of the lifetime of, of the software it's uh, it's a tool to use in the migration phase. Uh, can move to the next slide. Uh, so what Mobiles offers is tools to autom automate the modernization of uh, the applications. Either it is from VB6 to .NET, .NET to HTML. We we have an offering which is based on a standard a tool. Uh, on top of that. Uh, Mobiles can offer different level of services uh, from uh, support uh, using your own uh, technicians to do the migration to a fixed uh, migrated solution. So basically this is something which can be worked out to fit your needs either resource wise, financial or, or time wise. Uh, what we see and what we can uh, actually put on that's the guarantee of the result uh, and the analysis analysis phase which uh, we do for you will state the way to the to your goal and uh, and also secure that you can do this on cost on time and at the quality so that you don't uh, bring your risk to a higher level which is not uh, what you want uh, and what is normally the uh, risk when you do a manual uh, rewrite on an uh, existing solution. Next slide, uh, Mr. <laughs> so uh, the phase uh, of uh, doing this, uh, this is uh, we have uh, built up here as a factory line and, and it's the analysis phase where we do the introduction and do an assessment of your uh, files. That's a tool which you can uh, download and, and send us the files. It's not uh, any 
uh, sec uh, security matters in that because we just want to know the structure and, and the components used in, in, the, in the application. And it tells us normally, it tells us more than enough to, to give you a ballpark for, for the project uh, as it, it looks. Uh, next phase, uh, we'll go more into the architecture and, and to work with the solution. Uh, normally, we do a blueprint, a migration blueprint on site at customer. Uh, spend one week with an te uh, experienced technician, which dig into the solution, discuss the new, uh, the expected and wanted uh, structure and architecture of the new, uh, the migrated application, and also find out how. Uh, or at least propose the way a project can be uh, performed so that you can reach the goal you have set. And uh, after the blueprint, uh, we deliver a, a report which states all the uh, elements and choices and, and suggestions and also the uh, scheduled uh, phase for the uh, line for, for doing the uh, migration. Then we're coming to the phase where it's uh, more about the tools to, as you saw previously, uh, there are tools which do most of the work here and take it from to a level depending on application, but uh, something in between 15 to, uh, yeah, from 85 or percent or sometimes even higher than that, uh, which is automate, automatically modernized, rewrite, written with uh, the uh, migration tools. And then you go to the phase where you either uh, get a visual equivalence, which is one step of our deliveries uh, of the tools. That's uh, uh, application, then you get an application delivered back, which is tested to a level which you can see work on the, the different uh, main screens, but is not tested throughout and uh, all parts of the uh, logics because that that's, uh, depend on test cases, which we need to do the functional equivalent, which is the full and full-bodied uh, migration. So something in between the tools and uh, functional equivalents uh, can be performed for you as uh, as you feel is right uh, for your project. Um, Next phase uh, then is uh, further uh, work with uh, database migration, mobilize uh, UX, and uh, what we saw uh, regarding HTML5 and, and cloud-enabled uh, applications. Next slide, uh, Mike. Yeah, so uh, that's about our offering, and um, so what we offer as a next uh, step now, which is uh, which is uh, the base of also this uh, webinar, that's we're looking for customers who want to do a free proof of concept, so you can have a part or a, a, a application you have, and and uh, we can uh, wrap it around for you so that you can see it uh, working in a new environment, uh, and uh, or else we probably. Uh, can uh, go further with uh, with uh, either meetings or, or uh, migration blueprint at your uh, project so that you can get the details for a possible migration project. So that's uh, that's the outcome of this. Any questions from uh, attendees? Yes, we have we have several questions. I'll go ahead and, and start with the first one and. Uh, one of the attendees is asking, uh, how do we price uh, WebMap2? So basically, the, the pricing depends on the source code and the target platform. We use uh, the number of lines of code of your application to actually get to the pricing. If you start with your application in VV6, we will need to first convert that code to .NET using the Visual Basic Hybrid Companion and then we would actually convert the .NET code to HTML5 using WebMap. So uh, that, that would be what we call a double jump, and we have a special pricing for that. If you already have your code in, in, in .NET, uh, we will do a, a just one jump from .NET to HTML5 
so so there's there's a difference there in in, in what pricing is. To give you the figures uh, better, it's uh, about doing the assessment, the uh, the one uh, for the HTML tool, and or else also the one which uh, uh, assess the uh, BB6 code, uh, so that we can uh, get a view into your code and then put a ballpark price on a project. That that's another question that. Uh, we have here and it, and it is how do we get started uh, in order to get pricing as, hmm. as Peter was mentioning uh, you can download our free assessment tools either for VV6 or .NET from our website uh, and you will also receive an email after the webinar with, with the materials uh, where, where those links will be included so basically you will need to run uh, the assessment tools and send us the reports uh, those those reports uh, do not have any confidential information. They do not include any code. Uh, it's basically metadata about the number of lines of code, third-party controls that you use, and and things like that. So based on that information, uh, we can we can actually start talking and and work on a ballpark estimate for you. Any other questions? There's another question here about how we handle third party controls. Basically, what, what we do normally is the tool by default will actually convert the most common VV6 third-party controls uh, to either their, their direct equivalent in .NET or a third-party control version in .NET. When you run the assessment tool, uh, we'll go ahead and tell you what exactly can be done and or what, what would actually be converted and what it will be used through Cominterrupt and how we can actually use the use those controls. So uh, that's something that we can do and we would actually go over the migration blueprint uh, where we would actually analyze how you're using those components and we can actually customize the tools uh, to make sure that if the component is used throughout the code, uh, we can get that code converted automatically, saving a lot of uh, manual effort in order to get to, to the functional equivalence uh, part of the application. And uh, that was uh, the last question you had, Nelis uh, Rodrigo? Yes, so far that's what we have. Is there anything else, uh, people, what you want to know? Uh, if not, I'm not going to keep you after working hours. Uh, <laughs> and. Uh, we will follow up with uh, a mail, as uh, Rodrigo said, with uh, the links uh, you need to, to take the assessments and also uh, to bring your project on, on our scheme. And uh, then we will help you uh, run this further. And if you have any questions, uh, either now or, or depend on your project, please feel free to pop them down to us uh, on a mail. Uh, I think all of you have my mail address. and. Uh, and uh, we will follow up and, and give you all the answers you need uh, to evaluate the options uh, using uh, mobile.net technology to migrate. So, uh, if